Don't call her cute. Don't call her feisty. She's a rebel. She is nasty. She is brave. She is a honey sweetie sugar pie baby. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. Don't you ever say that she was well behaved. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. Should I talk about what I did? Would that be a good banter? Are we starting? Yeah, let's uh, let's, oh, let's introduce, introduce yeah, yeah, the yeah, podcast. Yeah. Hi, um, you're listening to to the greatest podcast ever made. Well behaved. By us. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> to the greatest Ooh, podcast Molly and I have ever made. It will be the best episode because we are in the lap of luxury right now. I'm Molly Rubin Long. I'm Ariel Elias. And we are, are we allowed to say where we are? Yeah, I oh, think okay. so. Well, for I mean, one... not like the address. <laughs> 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 but uh, Ariel is dog sitting for one of her uh, clients, and they live in Manhattan. I won't say where, but anywhere Manhattan means that it's nice. It's a fancy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a. It's a fancy also a part. fancy part of Manhattan. It's a fancy part of Manhattan, and this is a fancy apartment, and there's a lot of leather furniture, and beautiful kitchen appliances, and outdoor space. In it's this the kind of furniture apartment. where you're like, I should be drinking bourbon as yeah, I sit oh here. Yeah. Oh my god, it is very. It's I, our friend, my friend Julia Claire, your friend too. I mean, our yeah, I can say our friend. <laughs> I don't know. That's weird. Um, but this will be a. I, I like mean, to name people like, on the pod. I like to name people on the podcast to see um, if they listen. Do you know this is a test? But um, I think she actually does. But this furniture is really her brand. She would love this. She would love the look of this. It's very, very wooden. <laughs> very, yeah, it feels very wrong brown to watch mahogany. TV in here. Like you feel like you should yeah, just you be, should reading be reading, yeah, or writing your manuscript. It's fun. It's fun to have. Um, it's fun to have furniture that guilts you into reading. That's <laughs> what I want. It's furniture that's more educated than I am. I know. Well, that's that's. Good. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Um, that's good. I did something very. Uh, dumb. What'd you <laughs> do, morning. Molly? What'd you do? I stood in line for three hours for a free lipstick, and by the time I got to the front of the line, uh, they only had f- well three colors left, and one was like an aqua, one was a gray, and one was a, a sort of a blue, a darker blue, a light, a sort of darker blue, and so I went with that one. Um, but. It was crazy waiting in line because it's National Lipstick Day today. And so Mac was giving me three li- free lipsticks. And I was like, I'll just pop by. And then after a while, I was like, I have to stick it out. I have to stick it out. You how, know? Much, how much would a tube of lipstick from there cost? $17. Okay. And you waited in line for three, three hours. hours. <laughs> so that's five t- something an hour. Yeah. But my time has no value. I mean, like, I don't, I mean, you know, what am I doing with myself? It's fine. What uh, else would you have done today? Yeah, if I have you tons getting of a free time of and no money, so really, it's not that bad for me. I will do. I will stand around for a long time for free stuff. I think it looks good on you, like because you have a thank you. You you can pull off costume stuff very well. Thank you. In a way that I don't think that I do. Like I feel very self conscious when I wear lipstick because I feel like it makes me look like a like the grown up that I'm not. Yeah. And I, well, this lipstick does not make anyone look like a grown up. It looks, but it looks really nice on you. Is it off right now? Mostly. Okay. You, there's off. a little bit. Like, you look a little hypothermic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it off. I put it on, like, before I went on this, because, like, before I left the store, I was like, I just have to see what this looks like. And I and it was like, eh, it's not terrible. I think I'll probably wear it. I think I'll wear it, like I was saying before, I'll, if I'm wearing just, like, a subtle color like a very basic outfit sort of subtle color but sort of fancy and I do very subtle makeup around it I think it could look really cute so anyway that was my morning and uh it was it was sort of dumb (laughs) but but you 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 got out there you like stood outside I did I rode my bike and I stood outside so I burned a lot of calories you had like a New York experience I did the funniest part okay the two funny parts were at one point like when I was halfway through the line, this like 50 year old Hispanic lady came by and was like, and, 
and was like, I can't believe it. They don't have any good colors left. And she like showed us the samples of the colors on her hand. And at that point, there were way more than when I got there. And she was like, there's no reds. There's not even a peach. <laughs> and I was like, which one did you get? And she was like, this dark one. She's like, I'm going to have to give it to my sister. <laughs> and I was like, that's rude. <laughs> You're like, this is hideous. I'm going to give it to my sister. Maybe her sister has a different complexion and it would look good on her. Maybe. I mean, it would look good on her. It was, she actually got a, she got a color that I would have wanted. It was sort of like a, it was like a dark gray. It would, that's a color I I would have actually probably used all the time. I was hoping to get like a black of some kind. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm, I have a black lipstick, but it's from like a very cheap beauty supply store in new Orleans and it comes off super easily. So I would love like, but I, but it also feels dumb to like invest in a lot of money in a very good black lipstick. Cause I'm not going to use it like all the time. Yeah. What do you wear that to? Honestly, it looks like pretty, like it, you can wear that, uh, pretty, uh, st- like, nor- I mean, not during the day, I would say yeah. at night, but I could, I've, I have tried it, you know, if I do go out with a black one that I have, I have to keep, it's like a lot of upkeep, but, um, it looks pretty good. Not gonna lie. <laughs> looks pretty good on me. Uh, You're so. so beautiful. Thank you so much. You are too. Stop it. You can wear lipsticks. I don't know. My lips are a lot. So are mine, but that's why you should wear them because it's like, va va boom. <laughs> va va boom. Um, but I don't know. But anyway, it was, it was all right. I feel fine about it. It's like, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to like figure out how to wear it. And, and they, oh, they also gave samples of like classic good colors. So I have a couple of uses of like a good, like a Ruby Woo or whatever. So anyway, I took a nap today was, while you were doing that. I know. So. I'm glad that you did something productive. I felt so bad. I was well, running late. So these dogs are used to sleeping in the bed mm. and the bed is not that big. And also I have my dog here and my and shacky. Your, and your other <laughs> dog. So, you two dogs. <laughs> so there was a lot of, a lot of walking around and moving last night. Oh God. And, uh, Oh good, I'm glad you Not got so a much sleep. How was your birthday yesterday? Honestly, it was like fine. <laughs> I just don't think I don't think the day itself matters that much because it's like I had to go to work. Yeah, I was stressed out because I had to figure out a way to get Bamford over here. How'd you end up doing it? Girl? Shaggy gave me a ride. Okay. Because I was going to drive, but I get so stressed out driving into the city because I'm not used to and it. So where would you park the car? Um, I mean, there, there are places around here uh, that where you can park. It's true. I mean, on the weekends, it's a lot easier. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, the interesting talk of like waiting in line for lipstick and parking. <laughs> 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 that podcast gold well, we're that we're about your birthday. Yeah, we're yeah, recapping. Yeah. We're recapping I think our my, lives. The the best part about my birthday was I mean, I heard from a couple of friends from high school, which was really nice. That's nice. And I was really happy to to hear from them. And then my brother is in town and oh, we we went to he was like, pick anywhere for dinner. So I chose Ooh. the oyster bar in Grand Central Station because I think it's just the neatest place. I've never been there. I, I just I like going there because it one, I feel like I mean, not to Grand Central Station, but never the yeah, oyster bar yeah, yeah, inside yeah. of it. I I feel like not everybody who passes through there knows knows that it exists and so that makes me kind of happy that's cool because I like when New York feels like it has a secret yeah. you know what I, like I used to love going to the High Line and now it's just overrun with people and it's yeah. not as much fun anymore yeah but going into the into the Oyster Bar and Grand Central Station feels like very romantic it feels like I can just I can imagine what that looked like in the 1920s where like men with hats were just sitting there like yeah. cheating on their wives yeah, and like meeting like, somebody yeah. for like an illegal business deal yeah, and it's it, fun yeah I like being <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. like being there um is it was did you just get oysters did you get a whole like array of seafoods we did get oyster it was an array we got oysters and then um two seafood salads mm. which were good one of the, the fish on one of them was very undercooked where my Ooh. brother and I were like well if we did you say anything no you see we just kind of ate around it you gotta say something you especially on your birthday you would have gotten all kinds of free shit (laughs) i mean we were just kind of like well i mean if we wake up in the morning with diarrhea we know where it came from and then this (laughs) morning it's always good to know (laughs) and he stayed here last night and so this morning i was like hey i didn't get food poisoning and he was like me neither and we (laughs) high-fived we did it we have like strong iron constitutions yeah i have a strong stomach too it's hard to it's hard to rattle me um I do have diarrhea frequently, but I think that that is just the plight of a woman. You know, I think that that's just part of our livelihood um, is constantly diarrheaing. Um, hello, listeners. Thank you for being here. It's the most ladylike <laughs> podcast you're ever going to hear. Uh, well yeah, behaved. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I mean, I feel like in the before the 1900s, 
everybody had diarrhea yeah, all like the all time. The, well, yeah, you could die from it. It was very serious. Someone has a bit about that. I think maybe it's Nate it's Nick, No, no, no. It's oh, uh, Nick Mullen. Oh, yeah. It's Nick Mullen. He has a bit about uh, about how serious diarrhea was. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> how they'd have like the oh, brown ribbons God. on their carriages. That's so funny. Diarrhea. That's really funny. He's I, so funny. I know. Funny. Although I will say, because he has uh, his podcast, Come Town. Yes. Which is like. Doesn't need a plug. They're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, well, so on our podcast, my mom was telling me, she was like, oh, like when I download your podcast, on the bottom, it says like other podcasts people downloaded who listen to this. And Come Town is one of them. And wow. she was like. Like, oh. is that Nick's? Because she like Nick has stayed oh, at our place no. before, and she loves Nick. Don't listen and to this. I know. Well, and I was like, I was like, yeah, it's Nick's, and she was like, and is it a good podcast? And I was like, well, it's like very successful. They do really well. Like that's how he makes his living now. And she was like, good for him. Should I listen to it? And I was like, absolutely not. No, I don't. No, think you want no, to do you that. should not. It's, not. it's not for moms. It's for it, especially especially my mom. She's for, like, like little brothers. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's for a fifteen year. It's for look. I'm not shitting on Come Town. No, it's no, no. For a wide I, array if, of people. I, I but just don't want my mom listening. <laughs> absolutely not. I don't think they want their mom listening. I think that that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, this is for sure a podcast for moms. Um, this is a podcast yeah. for moms. Podcast for for uh, for moms, for anyone, dads. Not by moms, but right. for moms. Not that I know of. With moms in mind, <laughs> about um, moms. Yes, I know. I talk. I realize I talk about my mom every episode. It's like sort of embarrassing, but I think she's it's great. really sweet. My my mom likes it. She likes the shout out. She's gonna listen to this and be like, "I will just buy you a lipstick." <laughs> <laughs> that's what's gonna happen she's gonna be like ah uh, you did stop <laughs> what it what's happening um but yeah that's great oh the other thing the other crazy thing that happened in line was this uh this woman she was also like she was like older african-american woman and she was like pushing like a wheel a wheel oh what's it called a walker mm-hmm. she had a hard hat on and then american and sunglasses that just had american flags in the eyes <laughs> you know and uh and she just started yelling as she walked down the line she was like you'll stand in line for lipstick but where were all of you at city hall when the police officer was shot where were you talking about Bill de Blasio? <laughs> and I was like, oh, New York. And then so many people came up and asked us what it was and then started like rolling their eyes and laughing at us. And I was like, fuck, fuck you. you. You're not better than anybody. You're give me 17 damn dollars. Anyway. That's like when I one time stood in line. I won't say the name of the comedy club, but I one time stood in line for it because they were like holding. You would wait in line to for at at this comedy club and uh say your name and they would give you a date or a time to come back oh, and I've audition heard about that i know which one you're talking about do you still do, did you? i left like 45 minutes into it i was oh. like you know what i don't need this but it was so funny to watch people so come I up and be like it. no <laughs> molly you don't you don't uh, you like, really okay, don't okay i don't waiting in life the weather's that's the other thing the weather was perfect there was like one moment where the sun came out and i was like oh god i'm in summer but mostly it was like cloud coverage but no rain so it was like that's the other it was i think if it had been super hot or raining or cold i would have been out of there but the weather was kind of perfect for just standing yeah perfect standing weather so yeah like what are you doing with your time in union square that you can come up to you and you yeah they were like what what is that what's this for and we were like auditioning for a spot a year from now to get in <laughs> and they're like oh can I wait in line it was weird it, there were a lot of people there who I was like I've never seen any yeah. of these people before that's and that's like, kind of when I was just like I don't need to be here yeah well you obviously don't that's and now sure. I'm pretty famous right so. now we have a very successful podcast I still don't perform at that club though. <laughs> well I think you're fine it does nothing matters it's not my choice to- <laughs> what I've come to learn is nothing matters. Nope, it sure um, doesn't. Nothing even matters. It sure. All. Do- oh, that That's was like pretty. Lauren Hill. You're so pretty. She would hate me. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> should we get into it? Yeah, yeah, Speaking yeah. of people who would hate me, yeah, yeah, should yeah, I do yeah, my yeah. Do yours first? Yeah, I think it's my turn. Yeah, to you Google do yours first. first. Okay. All right. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Perfect. Let's. Well, you have Google it. I think it's. I think it's Jean Jean Barre. She's French. French. It's Jean, but like J E A N N E. So I don't know. It's like Jean. 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 I think it's Jean. We'll Gina? just say Jean. Jean. Well, it comes. Jean. She like changes her name later to okay, like well. Jean, but like J E A N, where it's like right. okay. That's I'll just good. tell you the story. So That's perfect. Jean was born July twenty seventh, <laughs> two days ago. 
uh, 1740 in La Comelle in the Burgundy, Burgundy region of France. Am I saying that right? France? <laughs> you are. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> so we got a cancer on our hands. Um, oh, no, she's a Leo. She's like me. She's exactly Husk. like me. She's, is she? Yeah, she's know. a Leo. More lions, baby. We're My very, dad's a Leo. Very stubborn. Wait, I thought May was Leo. No. No, late oh, July Taurus. I'm Taurus. and August. I'm thinking Taurus. I don't really believe this, so I guess it doesn't matter. But. I don't either. And it doesn't matter for the story. I just wanted do to... You find, do you find parts of your personality similar to hers? Um, like, do you want to, maybe, maybe we'll, maybe we'll reveal it as a Some, question. Okay. So we don't really know what happened during her childhood because it was the 1740s and they just didn't write about that shit. Right. Right. But at some point, so her dad was an, Ill- an illiterate laborer. Um, her dad, or as they say in France, her papa <laughs> was an illiterate laborer, but at some point she learned how to write and like, nobody really knows why. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it was like pretty uncommon for like the next generation, like it, like in that region of France, it was just sort of like whatever your parents did is what you did. Right. Uh, but but so somebody somebody taught her to read and write. And then in her early twenties, she starts working as a housekeeper for this dude named Philibert Commerson, uh, and he was a naturalist, which is just like someone who's into nature. Cool. Um, but he was also just like a real sickly nerd. So Philibert's wife died in childbirth because that was what women did back then. <laughs> I feel like that's just like every story is somebody dies yeah, in childbirth. Very common, very common death. Which, oh, I meant to tell, I started watching The Handmaid's Tale. I oh, finally, I finally was like, I'm mentally How in a, you? I'm three episodes in. I really, really like it. It is, I've had a lot of nightmares about it, but Have I really like it. Book? No. Okay. Um, and my brother was supposed to bring it, but I think we both forgot. Mm. Um, I listened to it on tape, which I can send you. Claire Danes reads it. It's very intense, but I liked it. But the episode where she's giving birth yeah. um, and they all like where it's just like, oh, yeah, like they don't have. You can see pretty clearly why people used to just die from this. Yeah, it's horrible. So Ugh. so that's what Philibert's wife does. And then a couple of years later, Jean got pregnant mm. and it was definitely Philibert's, even though nobody would say outright. Mm. So it was just a secret that kind of everybody knew. Mm. And in like France, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little less harmful. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. 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 Sure, sure. Uh, and at the time in France, there was a law that if an unwed woman got pregnant, they had to get a certificate of pregnancy. Mm. And Formal. you could... Uh, name the father but Jean refused to but like we all know right well that's nice of her I guess yeah I How don't really she protecting him I, I think know. I think part of it was just like she didn't feel the need to implicate him I think they were in in love yeah I guess sort of he was like probably supporting it's I mean they spent they spent their life his life together oh, like okay. she he dies before she does yeah. but she was with him until the end and it seems like he really needed her mm. too. And it's also like, what were her other options? Like yeah. she, like yeah, she could. She could, at the very least, she could write her name. We don't really like know exactly, but. Um, yeah. So in 1765, Philibert was invited to join an expedition by a Frenchman whose Let name I'm going to ch- Louis Antoine de Bougainville. Where is it? <laughs> right here. Oh, Bougainville. Louis Antoine de Bougainville. Bougainville. <laughs> I think Bougainville is right. Bougainville. Bougainville. Uh, which, like, it seems like everybody was just joining expeditions because in the 1700s. You gotta expedite. All. Like, you couldn't just go to the movies if you were you bored. Expedish. You had to just, like, go do something. Yeah, go explore. Go go conquer a land. Go, go. Well, so Philibert was like, I really, really want to go, but I'm a sick little nerd who loves the outdoors, but, like, my allergies. That's so sad. <laughs> I know. He was just, Philibert. like, a pale, sickly man who loved bugs so yeah, well. they told him he could bring like an aide with him and he chose Jean because if you're going to travel with an aide like travel with an aide that you can fuck right aid with benefits <laughs> 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 um but of course women weren't allowed to go on these expeditions so because you know like right. we like no 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 because we we bleed anywhere. and things and mm-hmm. you know we're, we're like right now. we're we're the frail ones 
Uh, so are you really? Yeah. I whatever. I'm not gonna get into my period on this. But it's yeah. enough. It's already well. It's fine. I feel I, there's nothing wrong since with I got it. my IUD. I don't get my period anymore very often. You have the hormonal one, right? Yeah, but mm. I feel like I'm sometimes I'll like get like PMS symptoms I a little need bit, it or like, else I will constantly think I'm pregnant, which is. I get it. Yeah, that'd be stressful. I've learned to, to settle down about it. But uh, one time though, I went to the OBGYN. And it was just like the nurse or whatever. And I, don't give me that look, Daniel Shackey. You're part of the reason why I'm in this situation. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> this you is for you. <laughs> so. Did, someone anyway. told me that Liz said, this is, a, I forget who told me this, but someone said that Liz McGee said that, that she uses condoms because then it's uncomfortable for both of them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's so funny. Yep. She's That's, a principled woman. I, I, God bless her. She's incredible. Um, but anyway, that's really yeah. funny. Um, but so I went and she, I, she was like, when's the last time you had your period? And I was like, nah, I don't know. <laughs> like, and she was like, you're for sure pregnant then. And I was like, no, 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 I have an IUD. And she was like, oh, it wasn't the OBGYN. It was like urgent care for oh, something. And so they just they like didn't know. know. What doing. They don't. They just like don't. It, but it was a woman who like was seeing me. And she, it was a woman doctor. She, she just, the, and she still thought you. It was, she was just very suspicious when I was like, no, with an IUD, you don't. You yeah. stop getting your period. And she was like, that doesn't sound right. And I was like, well, it's modern medicine. <laughs> so. Oh, God. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> well, I can't. I just, just can't wait to meet your child. Is all I'm saying. Um. Anyway, she is going to be great. <laughs> Even if she doesn't want to be a she. Yeah, she, she can be a she. <laughs> she can be whatever she wants as long except as she. A man. <laughs> except a man. <laughs> My child's going to be whatever. <laughs> Just not. Uh, Alrighty. Okay, so, um, so Jean and Philibert. Mm-hmm. Which Wait, I so th- how did they get around her going? I'm they- going to tell you. Oh, sorry, so Jean and Philibert concoct this plan Good. where she's going to disguise herself as a man. And travel with him. Joan of Arc style. The French love that shit. Yeah, they really do. It's just like, Fabulous. but also, can you like imagine the role play on that? Just because French women don't have hips, they look really good in men's clothes. Is that true? French women don't? I don't know. I'm just making things. I just think of all French women as like lean and tall and thin and, and yeah. like beautiful. And like, they just look so great in a suit. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, we just have one baguette My a goal day. in life is to someday have enough money to get someone to tailor a suit for my body that look like I'd love to rock like a tux but in order for me to do that it would take so much tailoring you know I think you could get there though thank you I think it you're gonna have a lot of the money. tailoring thank you I that's my goal that's my goal so we'll hopefully you look really would you wear the blue lipstick with that yeah like this I feel see, like that would look really good with, with it and my hair up in a high bun yeah great a lot of look. pins great look but I the suit's got to be perfect I'm no dummy I've seen a woman with hips in a suit and I said you, you flew too close to the sun my friend <laughs> you flew too close to the sun when you are nominated for your first Emmy right I think you're yeah. not going to be able to afford it yet. But when you're nominated for your <laughs> second Emmy, that's it. That's the that's day. That's when you're going to be able to do it. Great. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to be, can I, oh man. If Louis can't come, I'm going to be right by your side. You can be my date. Louis doesn't, Great. he'll just be, he'll just be like annoyed that it's like that people are touching things and touching him. He'll be like, it's, yeah. Last night, what happened? Last night, he got this woman like pushed in front of us at this concert and he spent like a whole song just like seething at her. And I was like, you got it. Afterwards, I was like, you got to just let it go. Like she ruined that experience for you. And he was like, yeah. Imagine if you were with someone else and you actually enjoyed things. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Um, all right. Sorry. Okay. I keep interrupting. No, no, no. That's what this podcast cool. is. I know we apologize a lot. Hey, Bamford. Bamford. What up, hey, baby girl. All there right. are just dogs everywhere. <laughs> dogs everywhere. All right. So in 1766, in December, mm-hmm. they joined, yeah. excuse me, they joined the expedition. And, you know, that's a good time to set yeah, sail, long. December. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, that's horrible. And it just so I happened. This dog is this dog gonna eat me? No, no, no. She's really friendly. Sometimes, sometimes she's like a little iffy with other female dogs. Ooh, is she so, chill with Bamford? Yeah, we've like had a couple of encounters of like mm. Maggie barking a little too much or I just like, like being mad, but she's I like cool. Her vibe though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maggie's really sweet. Also, when really you said sweet. there are three dogs in here, I freaked out. But then, actually, there are three very chill. These are very chill dogs. Well, I took them to the dog run this morning and made them chase a, a ball okay. for an hour. Maybe that's why. <laughs> but, like, if, if a dog could just be like this, I'll, I, that's why I want, yeah. like, an old dog that's, like, half 
in the elder world. My next dog, I just want to adopt a 10-year-old dog from a shelter mm-hmm. and be like, you can die here. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. And then you just chill, just sleeps and farts. I mean, that's perfect. You yeah. Know? That's me. Anyway, um, so, okay, so December, terrible not time. Philibert and, and Jean, though. Oh, so at this, so this is where she changes her name from Jean, J-E-A-N-N-E, to Jean, J-E-A-N. Jean. 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 Jean, Jean, Jean. Jean. But I feel like those would be pronounced the same, Jean. right? Like it's just the spelling. Maybe it's Jean. Jean I'm versus look Jean. It up. Keep going. Okay. All right. I'm, this is this is too much. Um, and Philibert was not a light packer. He like had all this shit because you know how men are. They just like take everything. Yeah. So the captain gave up his quarters for Philibert and Jean. And which also meant she had her own bathroom, which was a, so she was able to keep her 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 womanness hidden. Um, Philibert suffered badly from seasickness and a recur- a recurring ulcer on his leg. Uh, so like, Jean. Okay. There you go. Jean. That's right. her, right? That but and then what's J E A N? Okay, I'll look it up now keep going um that's okay so so she was like spending a lot of time taking care of him uh they went to montevideo which is in uruguay pronounce names.com <laughs> <laughs> Jean. 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 okay Jean. okay all right so they so they're like doing all these expeditions but Philibert's leg hurts him so much so Jean is the one who's like having to do all the labor and carrying all of his supplies and specimens but it seems like she doesn't hate it like uh, they go to Rio de Janeiro which is like a super dangerous place the captain or the chaplain was murdered as soon as they got there Um, and Philibert just like had to stay on the ship because he was too sick and, but Jean was like, all right, I'm going. Like, I'm going out there. I'm collecting these specimens. Get them. I'll be back. You, like... Oh, wait, where you, were they? Where did they end up? So first they're in Uruguay. Then oh. they go to Brazil. Ooh, that's a long um, uh, boat ride. Yeah. Then they go to Patagonia, which is Ooh. the southern part of Argentina yeah. and Chile. Did you already know that? Um, I wouldn't have I knew it was like the southern tip of something but oh, okay. I wouldn't have known this I didn't know I had to look it up I just know because my mom really wants to go there and she's told me she wants to go there and also I remember it's like the name of the gear company that people wear in like Martha's Vineyard oh Patagonia. I think there are penguins there that's tight as hell I'd love to see some penguins well <laughs> we could go to the zoo <laughs> <laughs> we could go to the zoo and see go them around. no need to go to Patagonia that's cool though so they went all the way down there so that's yeah long. so they got to Patagonia Jesus. um and Philibert is still like Meh, my leg so Jean's <laughs> again doing all the work he calls her his beast of burden which is like Aww. such a sweet pet name yeah. and she gets a reputation on the ship for being really strong right um and but then as a he well and then accounts differ on when it was discovered that she was a woman um and at first <laughs> Jean was just like a woman <laughs> me <laughs> no 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 I am just a eunuch. Um, she's like, being a woman would be crazy. I'm just a normal, regular guy who had his balls cut off before puberty, as we do in France. <laughs> Classic. Um, but like at some point, the, and it's like, there are all these like logs that different people on board kept, like journals and mm. stuff. But there's no consistency of when it was actually discovered that she was a woman, but nobody was happy about it. So they get to Mauritius is in Africa Mm -hmm. and that I did not know they (laughs) I only know it because I have a friend who studied abroad there it sounds like the name of a Disney villain Mauritius it does you're right (laughs) so uh, food was running low and uh, Philibert like had a friend there so they were like we're just gonna get off here so they stay in Mauritius Uh, Philibert dies in 1773 and she didn't have the money to get back to France, so she just like lived in Mauritius for a while. A few years later, she married a guy named Jean, <laughs> which cool. is weird because that was her dude name. But I also feel like everybody in France was named Jean. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that's like just John like of- it's John. It's John. Yeah. Everybody was Jean. John. So they go back to France. Her and her husband, her new husband, they go back to France, and not only and she's like pretty well received 
excuse me, when she gets back to France. So like not only she gets the money that was left to her in Philibert's well in his will. Oh, but she couldn't get it while she was in Mauritius. That's yeah, she couldn't get it in Mauritius, wow. but when she gets back, she can. Dope. And then she also gets a pension from the Ministry of Marine um, because they were like, they understood that she did most of the work. Mm. Um, <laughs> Pamford, you good? Pamford is upset by these very s- stiff couches. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I'm used she's to a comfy to ass couch. This couch. Well, let's be honest. She's used to a futon. She's, but it's a very comfortable, very nice futon. Thanks, Molly. This, this couch is very, this couch is for it's 15 years old. Uh, wa- this is a wasp. This is wasp per- furniture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and Bamford is for sure a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> she, has, she barks she's... at German shepherds. They're the only dogs that she doesn't <laughs> like. It's totally true. I'm not making it up. <laughs> Good for you, Bamford. I know. There's part of me that's like, good girl, but also like, <laughs> we're the Nazis now. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm also, she died in 1807, and she was officially the first woman to circumnavigate the globe. Wow. Ever. That's cool. So that's, let me find her name again, Jean Barre. Wow. That was a B-A-R-E-T. good one. It's fun, because like, nothing terrible happens to her. Yeah. I'm. We're about to hear a very sad tale so i'm glad oh, no, that maybe you should have started really, yeah we're gonna end on a very sad note okay. um all right so just this, get prepared yes get, get your prepared. tissues out and we're gonna you know we're gonna try to lighten it Smoke up your but weed. i'll tell you what right now it is this is a sad tale but also i mean it's cool but like look women's history warning, history in general warning rape <laughs> okay like a lot like tons okay like hella rape okay all right. um here we go her name is Fulan Devi, and she's also known as the Indian Bandit Queen. Cool. Yeah. She's cool as hell. Um, she was born August 10th, 1963 in Gurakapura. Okay, might be saying that wrong. Sorry. Um, which is this very small village on the uh, Yamuna River, um, where girls are basically just thought of as a burden. Um, I'm going to read a, a quote from this Atlantic article um, about the, quote, real India. Oh, yeah. All of my sources were Wikipedia. Tight. <laughs> tight. I didn't... I'm glad that you that we're open to that. Yeah. I was feeling ashamed. It's fine. No, Mine... I'm, this is not for a PhD. <laughs> You can fucking, we can, we can use Wikipedia. Right. I, I looked at like a couple other things too, just to, to like make verify. sure. But but it was, if you're, if you go and look her up and you look at the Wikipedia and you're like, Ariel, you kind of just retold That's that fine. Wikipedia. You know you're what, right. Well, you know, I the, did. We saved you that time. So I did good do for that. You. Um, okay. So here's this quote from this Atlantic article from like 1996, but it basically says that, ah, oh, son of a gun. This did you just lose mother, it? I just lost it. It's coming back. It's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me now. Okay, again, that's not the melody. <laughs> I don't know what song that Maybe is. Maybe we're singing two different songs. It's, it's if all you touch coming. Me like yes. Yeah. If you don't really me like, like that. that. There we go. It was uh-huh. all long ago, but it's all gone. Okay, I'm sorry. This is a very light mood for what's about to happen. Okay, all right. So the, the typical woman, uh, this is a quote from this article. The typical woman in northern India receives her inheritance at birth, that of being an unwanted burden, because she is not a son. She comes from a peasant family that owns less than an acre of land. Uh, Fulan's family owned an acre of land. Um, or from a landless fan- family whose existence depends on landlord's whim, she can neither read nor write, which was true about Fulan. She never uh, was; ne- she was never li- literate, uh, but would often like to do both. She has rarely traveled more than twenty miles from the village of her birth. If this she, is the typical woman. This right? is like typical okay. woman in this region, which is like yeah, common to what her story would have been had she not become the Indian bandit queen. Okay. Um, if she falls ill, she believes it is because of evil spirits lurking in trees. Her sole worth lies in producing sons and working in the fields for a meal and the equivalent of 50 cents a day. She is born into a caste, a geography, and poverty from which there is no escape. Once she marries at 14 or 15, her life will be fixed. Her future will become her mother's past. And then, so basically a lot of this is... Wait, that's... Her future will become her mother's past. I know. This article is really good. I'm going to say the name of the author. It's a female author, actually. Journalist, I should say. Um, Mary Ann Weaver. It's from a 1996 uh, Atlantic, the Atlantic okay. magazine. Um, and it was, this is like a lot of my sources um, because she really did like a cool profile on her. Um, but so a lot of like this story has to do with cast, which I'm going to be 
completely honest, I don't know like a ton about. Um, but basically she came, so Fulon came from this very low class, this class that I have the name of it somewhere in here. I'll get to it. But basically that was like mostly boatmen and fishermen. Um, and so a lot of like the, a lot of the struggles in her life and the sort of like cycle of revenge that she finds herself in comes from, uh, the, the caste system in India. Because there's, like, no way out, right? Like, whatever caste you're born I th- into. I think so, yeah. I mean, I don't want to speak with authority on it because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm p- pretty sure, yeah, I read it I want point. to. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't, but I will. <laughs> but I would, that I will. Um, but there, I read it at some point that, like, if you're one of the untouchables, one of the way to get out is you can convert to Buddhism, and then somehow hmm. that helps you. I don't really know. But I think for the most part, you're, like, pretty locked in, Um and I don't know, and this, again, this is, like, in the 90s, so I don't know if that is still, like, 100% how it is, but um, there we go. So her parents had four daughters before they had one boy, which is, like, the worst, because yeah. that's not what you want. Um, and her father lost all of his inheritance to his elder brother. So his older brother and his older brother's son, so her cousin, inherited, like, 15 acres of land somehow. I'm not entirely sure. Like, she constantly felt outrage about this from when she was a young girl that um, her cousin was getting this 15 acres of land that she believed should have belonged to her father. So at the age of 10... so interesting? Sorry to interrupt you, but it's not so interesting how, like, some people have that innate sense of justice and yeah. what is right and what is wrong and some people yeah it I think reminds m- me of Claudette Colvin yeah most people yeah exactly as like most a people child are like just that's like crazy yeah most people are just like products of their environment and it's yeah. sort of like well that's the way things are and you don't question it and then some people are and I yeah. think my favorite people are just like this is wrong and it yeah. makes me angry that this is unfair the products of the environment thing is so nuts because that is certainly like there's nothing in the world. It doesn't make any sense that fu- like Fulon should not just be like that typical woman that I just read about. Like right. it's all like it's so hard to get out of the structures that you live within when when the structures are when the when the systems of oppression are so strong as they as they were you know in the at this time in India and it also in the 60s and 70s and 80s you know it also shows you that there's sort of like no excuse for not speaking up you know what I yeah. mean like I mean it's scary and like she does get murdered spoiler but um <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, no. okay so maybe there's one there's excuse, no for excuse. Not- <laughs> Except you will get killed but you know um, like when people are like like when we talk about like one thing you know like World War II or, or or slavery or whatever when it's like well people just like that's what they were so like they didn't know that it was wrong it's, it's like, hard to yeah I mean you will you probably yeah. you're risking your life that's for sure yeah. but um hopefully the hit you know some these two girls who do comedy will talk about you on a podcast and it's really all you all you can dream of you know what I mean <laughs> all all the honor you can that can be bestowed upon you so anyway she's our so at the age of 10 she begins like trying to fight for the land and she starts taunting and like throwing insults at her cousin in front of his upper caste friends um in the public square and then at some point she organizes a sit-in on his land uh, which ends in him beating her with a brick when she's Um, 10 yeah when she's 10, she organizes yeah. a sit-in. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty much just her sitting in on the land, and then he yeah. beats her with a brick. Um, so anyway, um, at 11, so this is kind of like the foundation. Of, and, and so he's, and he, the brother of her, her dad's brother, her uncle, was much more connected to higher caste people and and people in, in the government. And so that's how, like, he kind of got all the land. So she mm-hmm. o- constantly, like, the, the root of her anger comes from caste struggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically Girl, she was about that, it like, too. <laughs> she just like you know it's like why just because you show up doesn't mean you're funny you know what I mean okay. yeah you don't want to um, hang out at shows all the time right right I have things to do like a podcast right exactly so at the age of 11 she is married to a man who's in his 30s in exchange mm. for a cow mm. and he mm. it, it brutally rapes her for many years for like three years um and eventually she escapes which is kind of incredible um and she walks the i read in that atlantic article that she walks the length of texas back damn home. yeah at the age Do you remember of that time we drove through 12. texas i know we drove through texas and it was 
bleak <laughs> so long and upsetting yeah well i mean i don't know if it was the landscape of texas necessarily but it was but even if it was the length it took us so long yeah it took us so it long took us to like get three through days um so that's yeah she that's walks insane. that whole thing at the age of 12 to escape her rapist husband um and she returns to her family but her family is disgraced and her mother recommends that she kill herself and jump in a well. She thinks about it, but doesn't Good because for you. she's strong and cool. And she ends up just kind of like living in her parents' village for a while um, in her teenage years. And um, is like constantly, you know, angry about the land that her father lost. Um, in 1979, she is arrested. She claims fraudulently for a robbery charge on her cousin's property and she's in uh custody with the police for a month and the police um beat and rape her while she's in there which is very common for women at the time apparently like if you got in police custody also like a lot of the police officers were friends with her cousin so they didn't treat her great so then at some point a band of this thing called daquats which i think i hope i'm saying that right i did look it up and now i'm like um you know uh, d- uh what's the word doubting Something, yourself doubting myself why couldn't i think of doubting Second guessing doubting that's exactly right okay. i was doubting but i think it's daquat um these duck well i'm sure seven people tweet at you yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> who cares it's d-a-c-o-i-t which just means bandits it's like indian bandits um a band of them come to her village and she ends up going with them it's unclear why she goes with them there's some speculation that maybe her cousin has her captured by them. Hmm. Maybe she goes in order to protect her younger brother, who she was very, you know, she loved very much. Um, there's, you know, there's some speculation that maybe she kind of went willingly just to get out of there, but it's not totally clear. But basically for the first 72 hours that she's with this group, the leader, Babu Ga- Gujar, Babu Gujar, um, who's the chief, uh, like brutalizes her and and is awful to her and like beats her up for 72 hours out on the third day his chief lieutenant this guy Vikram Mala ends up killing Babu Gujar and taking um Fulan as his mistress so for a little bit of context the original chief the one that brutalized Fulan Mm -hmm. was high caste and Vikram his lieutenant was low caste and his and had always admired Fulan Ah. so that guy kills the leader so he, the lower caste guy kills a higher caste guy and uh and takes and they they become lovers and they were in the same cast um so basically like he killed up <laughs> <laughs> always kill up you know always punch up right baby. punch up stab up <laughs> perfect um so That's so cool yeah i want this is pretty cool want, during this time she had a, a rubber stamp made for letters that said fulan devi daquat beauty beloved of vikram mala emperor of daquats Aww. it's like some game of thrones shit it's pretty yeah, cool yeah it does sound like game of thrones yeah and so at this point she kind of becomes a local legend this is when she starts to become a local legend her and this guy are like ruling shit together and all this so she's very into like omens and signs from the gods for instance, like once she saw a snake, like crawl up her leg while they were camping, like while the bandits were camping. Like, I would go were home camping. immediately. Oh, I know. I don't care what's waiting <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's just well, done. that's what she did. She agreed. She was like, this is a bad sign. She woke everybody up and she was like, we need to leave. And oh, they did. Yeah. And it turns out that the police were like coming after them. Oh, shit. So and then so then one time, though, she sees a black crow and she really wants to leave. But Vikram's like, nah, just like, it's fine and you're overreacting yes, you're too sensitive you're too sensitive you're cuckoo with your crazy which i would uh-huh. have said too because like it's a crow but it's whatever <laughs> um but then Crows it turns scary. out they kill him in his sleep so that's the, cro- a the crows did <laughs> no oh. a, like a, a oh, okay. Ra- a, okay so this is what happened so they so then these rival daquats uh, these two brothers Sri ram and lala ram they are both upper caste members and so as revenge for vikram uh, killing that upper that other upper caste yeah, daquat, the first dude they kill him in his sleep Ugh. they capture okay so the next part she like is never doesn't really ever like to talk about again trigger warning intense but um she basically what they think happened was that she's cap. so she's definitely captured by them and what they think happened next is that they take her on a boat they take her down river and they put her in this dirty dark hut 
and they like bind her and gag her and they basically just gang rape her until she's unconscious for a while um after several days like at one point they take her outside and people they they like humiliate her in the village eventually a friend of hers in a nearby village rescues her and takes her back home and that's when she starts her own daquat her own bandit gang and then she returns to the town where they took her, this town of Bemai, B-E-H-M-A-I. I think it's Bemai. Yeah, 17 right. months later, they take her, uh, she takes her newly grown bandit gang and um, she commits something called the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. So it's Valentine's Day, 1981 in Bemai, which is just a town of like 50 families. It's people who belong to the land-owning and warrior warrior class, which, excuse me, caste, which is a higher caste, the um, Takar, Takar caste, um, like Tom Takar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, actually, I should ask him. That I makes sense. I think it's spelled differently. Because he's half Indian. Right. Uh, yeah, maybe he has land-owning family. I think, it's, I think it's spelled differently. But anyway, it is, I think it's Takar, Takur, anyway. But um, so um, they're the second highest caste. So they're okay. very high caste. And she goes back to the town where she had been like brutally gang raped and there's no major roads to get there. Her and her, her band of Dakwats dress up as police officers mm. and walk into the town and everyone's like a little bit like, Oh, it's kind of weird that there's like a young girl leading these. Cause she's like 20 at the time. It's yeah. 1981. She's born in 63. So she's 19 or 20. God, It's crazy that this happened in the, like the, like the recently. 80s. Yeah. I know. It sounds like some like ancient shit. Yeah. But this it happened, sounds biblical as fuck. Yeah. This happened in the eighties. So they all dress up as police officers. Everyone's like, man, it's a little weird that there's a woman leading them, whatever. It's 20 people dressed in police uniform. They cross the river in the afternoon. Like in um, the sky is filled with crows. What's yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just like a band of crows, just dragons. Like it's like Game of Thrones. Um, but the, art- the Atlantic article said they were, quote, led by a young girl with bright lipstick, red nails, and unusual bob. Um, so see, she would have stood in line for lipstick, too. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> um, she would have left when there were no reds left, maybe. But um, <laughs> No, she would have gone and stormed she the store. Yeah, she would have just stolen taken her it for reds. herself. She would have waited in line. She would have been like, this uh, is unfair. <laughs> um, so... They went to the they went to the middle of the of the square to the shrine to Shiva, who's the goddess of destruction, and they order everyone in the village to gather all of their silver, gold, and cash, give it to them, and they and she just she has a bullhorn and she's like, bring out those brothers, like those brothers who mm-hmm. captured her. She's like, where are those brothers? And then all everyone in the village is like we don't know we don't know and she's like bullshit where are those brothers and everyone's saying they don't know no you know stitches get stitches brother where are thou um yeah (laughs) bro brother brother where are there thou they were gone i don't know but i don't know where they were but she was so mad she got all of the young men in the village rounded up and started ripping their turbans off and like kicking them in the nuts with their thing and then she was like where are they where are they like you're all liars and they no one would say where they were which makes me kind of feel like maybe they weren't there, but I don't know. But then she takes, she leads 30 of them uh, to the river and shoots all of them, killing 22 of oh, them. Oh, shit. That's why it was a massacre. Oh, shit. I know. I feel like Mar- uh, Marsha Belsky would love this person because yeah. she killed 22 men um, because of her rape. So I feel like I'm going to have to tag her in this. She, she'd love this lady. So like, talk about hating Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I know she had a worse Valentine's Day than James Comey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did he get fired on Valentine's Day? No, but he had that weird dinner oh, with Trump on yeah, Valentine's was Day. Was that that night? Yeah, he had like a weird dinner with Trump that oh. Valentine's Day. So, you know, we all have we all have bad bad Valentine's days, but hers was pretty. Yeah, she yeah. Was not a oh, fan. I didn't. And and the men who died also. I was thinking of them for a second. Anyway, I was also like, did they celebrate Valentine's Day in India? I didn't know that. But I don't know why it's called. I don't know if that's like what the British press called it or something and that's why it's called that. I was oh, confused. I mean, I, for a second, because I, I feel like Valentine's Day is a Christian based. I mean, it's it? based on St. Valentine, right? Right. Well, who's that? A Christian saint? I don't know anything Catholic about Catholic saint? I don't know. I just know I from know. 30 Rock where uh, when Salma Hayek mm. is a character for a while yeah, and she makes them go to 
uh, to ca- to mass on Valentine's Day. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe that's why. And I, she don't, goes, I mean, that's a good she, that's a good yeah. um like source. Yeah. Is she's for like history. Jack. Don't tell me you're one of those casual Catholics who only goes to church on Sundays. <laughs> My favorite it's really crazy. <laughs> oh my god, that show is so funny. I started rewatching it recently, just like as something to like put in the background. Yeah, it's, that's great. It's truly amazing. It's makes me feel like I'm not doing anything. Okay. Um. <laughs> anyway, so she kills 22 men, and Jeez. it's the largest Dequot massacre since the founding of modern India, and it's triply Jesus. shocking because. One, the scale. Two, it's led by a woman. And three, it's a lower cla- lower caste woman right. killing members of a vastly higher caste. So it's, like, shocking. And after this happens, she becomes super famous, like, folklore famous in India. People are Like, like songs fuck? written about her. Kind yeah, of so many songs. Yeah, definitely. There were songs written about her and, like, stories. And the police were totally looking for her. Um, and there was like a $10,000 bounty on her head, but she, the, the police couldn't find her. She ends up like hiding in the ravines of the Shambal River Valley for years, for like a couple of years. Um, so this was 1981 when the Valentine's Day massacre happened and she ends up, um, surrendering in 83. She starts her and her whole like bandit, uh, her whole band of Daquats become sort of ill and they've been hiding mm. in the ravines for a really long time. So they're kind of like, we kind of got to give ourselves up. Yeah. But she, um, the, the, so, and also this is a cool thing. Not great healthcare. No, in the not, great, <laughs> not great healthcare system in the, in the bounty world. Um, the bandit world, but the police, like, so no one knew what she looked like. Like the police didn't even have a photo of her. Oh, cool. Yeah. So she was just like, this is in the Which 80s. also for like a woman on the run, that's a dream I to know. be like. But she was actually super beautiful. I bet she was. She's really pretty, um, which is like cool. Um, <laughs> I love a beautiful murderer. I know. Me too. Who doesn't, you know? Um, but like, but like for revenge. I know. She, yeah. For rape revenge, which is like, sure. I, who, I think it's, uh, Leah Bonema has a super funny bit about, uh, how women just need to kill more people because she was at the gym. I don't, I hate to like tell someone's joke, go see her do it. But basically she's like at the gym and someone comes up to her and is like, and she's wearing a Steelers Jersey. And she's like, and they're like, do you know what the guy comes up to her and is like, do you know what that means? And she's like, do, do I know what my clothes means? Like, what are you talking about? And then she's like, women need to kill more people so that people are afraid to come up and say dumb shit to us. <laughs> and I think that yeah. that's so true. I think women um, kill a, like, we just need to put these stories yeah, out there. Kill for well, they kill. That's like this. Like she, the point of her joke too is like women kill for like reasonable things. Like you look at this and you're like, yeah, she should have killed all those men. Like she was fucking gang raped and no one cares. She was, she was married at eleven. Her, at eleven, yeah. she was raped by her husband. Like she's allowed to kill whoever she wants. It's that's well, my opinion. I think there comes a point where it's like there's no justice that's going to be served to you unless you right, serve it you out serve yourself. Your own justice, yeah. And like when you're treated like your life doesn't matter, like of Why course would you're you going to think other lives matter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, all lives do matter, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no. Um, anyway, so it's 1983. And oh my she- god, it's so weird that you just like read my shirt on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So it's nice to see. Mine says blue lives matter, but mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. 1983, and she negotiates her surrender. Oh, oh my god, I forgot this really key detail. Tell Another me. cool thing when, while she's before the St. Valentine's Day massacre. She goes back to the village where her husband lives, drags him out into the town square, stabs him repeatedly, and then leaves a note on him that says, don't marry young girls. <gasps> Which is yeah. cool as hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So that was tight. Ba, 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 ba. Um, and like yeah. mic drop. <laughs> that one's really good. And I think, I think she like wanted to do that with those brothers and then they weren't there and then she just like killed 22 random men, which is like tough, but... Whatever. I'm not mad at her. Um, <laughs> anyway, so she negotiates her own release, and there's a, there's a lot of conditions that she wins. Her own so, surrender? Yeah, excuse okay. me, her own surrender, yes. So the first condition is that she and her gang members will not be hanged. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two is that they're released from prison after eight years. Number three is that they will never be handcuffed. Number huh. four is they're permitted to live in the same prison together. Number five is that they go to an A class or like a VIP open jail, I guess. Um, number six is surrender that they'll only surrender in Mad. Oh God, how am I? Madhya Madhya Pradesh, 
and never extradited to Uttar Pradesh, which is where the massacre happened. So they, uh, I okay. think Cause like, they would probably be killed if they exactly, went there. I, to me, it's like, oh, is it like a province? Because it sounds like that. It's not, it's a region though. Yeah. I guess pr- I looked at Pradesh means like a region. So they want to be like released in one region and never brought back to that. And gotcha. Yeah. Because she thinks she'll be killed there. She wants the land of her father's um, stolen by her cousin to be returned her 14 year old brother to be given a government job and her family to be re- resettled into the um, Madhya province as well on government land accompanied by her goat and cow. Um, <laughs> so all of these agreements like never quite worked out. Many of her gang members, including her lover, Man Sin Singh. Um, so it's the new lover? Yes. Okay. Because the other one died. Right. Defied her orders and decided to have a trial in Uttar Pradesh and ended up being acquitted when they had trial there because uh, people were too scared to come forward and ID uh, gang members. So that meant that their sentences were severely reduced. And meanwhile, she ended up staying in pre- prison for over 11 years because basically, like, where was it? That's interesting that that like, kind of backfired. Yeah. I mean, it, it worked. they still weren't hanged, which they could have been. Right. But um, the idea of like... And she was let out after 11 years. Um, okay, here what, here's what it was. The, the guy who agreed to her terms ended up dying. And then the chief minister moved to a different region. So there was kind of no one on her side. And she was like stuck in prison with no resources, no access to legal counsel. Eventually, there was a member of government who was part of her caste. Uh-huh. And he petitioned for her release. And so she ended up getting out of jail, but only technically on parole. Uh, in 1994, shortly before her release, a film about her is released called The Bandit Queen. And that made her even more famous. But she really hated the film and ended up threatening to sue them. You never look as good on camera as you think you're. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, they didn't. <laughs> Your voice sounds so weird when you hear it back. <laughs> I know. They didn't consult her and they don't. Um, I think there's a quote about it. Okay. Okay. I found it. So in this Atlantic article, she says, quote, it's simply not the story of my life. So how can they claim it is? How can they say this is a true story when my cousin, what's, uh, I can't pronounce his name, the major nemesis of my life isn't even in the film. There's absolutely no mention of my mm-hmm. family's land dispute. In the film, I'm portrayed as a sniveling woman, always in tears, who never took a conscious decision in her life. I'm simply shown as being raped over and over again. Mm. And then the, um, the journalist says, but you are raped, uh, I began. And she interrupts. You can call it rape in your fancy language, she said, and her voice began to rise. Do you have any idea what it's like to live in a village in India? What you call rape, that kind of thing happens to poor women in villages every day. It is assumed that the daughters of the poor are for the use of the rich. They assume that we're their property. In the villages, the poor have no toilets. We must go to the fields, and the moment we arrive, the rich lay us there. We can't cut the grass or tend to our crops without being accosted by them. We are the property of the rich." They won't let us live in peace. You will never understand the kind of commu- the, what kind of humiliation that is. If they wanted to rape us, to molest us, and our families objected, then they'd rape us in front of our families. So yeah, <laughs> that's heavy. It just, she was like, so it's not that she just, I mean, obviously you didn't mean it like she didn't look good. But me, when I first heard that too, I was oh, like, yeah, why so didn't I- she like the movie? <laughs> no, but it's, no, but I wanted to read that anyway. Like she was angry with the movie because it didn't give her agency in a situation in which she took so much agency and she yeah. really like overcame, like the fact that she overcame all this is is insane and it anyway, doesn't it sounds like it didn't explore like her motives at all for like why right. she was doing this in the first right. place you know the solution is we have to write this movie <laughs> i know well you know what i was thinking is so many of the women that we do are like perfect biopic yeah they are i know everyone someone should just like do them we should do them i know but I don't that's really our next project write a dramatic biopic we can make it funny all we right. do it on the podcast every week that's true we I probably not um, <laughs> fool on Debbie. She's probably not the one for us to do that with. But there's someone out there. Anyway, this is the, really the incredible part and the part about like where her illiteracy becomes like stunning. Um, in 1996, she ran and won, uh, became a member of Parliament. Shut up. Yeah. So she became a member of Parliament in 96. She lost in 98, but then was reelected in 99 with the okay. I'm gonna try this Samajwadi Party. Uh huh. And then, Sounds right. yeah, in my, in my expertise, A-W-A-D-I. Um, and and then in 2001, while she is still a member of parliament, she's killed outside of her New Delhi home Ugh. by two upper caste men as part of this sort of crazy revenge no. cycle. Yeah. One of them was I saw an article that one of them was put in prison, but I think 
or no, excuse me, it was three men. It was three upper caste men. I think maybe two shot her and then one was driving away or something like that. Takes three men to do the job of... I know. (laughs) Of Um, one murder. But yeah, it's all like her, you know, her life really ends because of this, this caste struggle. So... Anyway, that was my person, full oh, Debbie. I like that so much. Yeah, she's fascinating. That was actually thanks to Louis. That was a Louis suggestion. Last nice, week was a Louis. Louis suggestion too. But um but this one was really it was really fascinating. I'd never I'd never heard of her in my life. Yeah. So I was Oh, happy by the to way, I her. real quick I got so I know all my sources were Wikipedia. Yes. I found out about it from this amazing I guess it's like a blog kind of thing called Rebel Girls. And it's just like all of these. It's a lot. It's like in list form, sort of like listicles or whatever. But it's a lot of like, you know, like 10 women who like explored the globe or whatever. Like, you know, like uh, the top 15 women of 2007. It's just like stuff like that. Um, So shout out to Rebel Girls because it was really great. Oh, yeah. I should also say my other source. So mostly it was that Atlantic article. I got a little bit from IndiaToday.com, a little bit from Encyclopedia Britannica. Throw back. Oh, look at and you. And a little bit from uh, Telegraph. Did you ever play that UK. Encyclopedia Britannica CD game that came on? It was like you were like in a prison in like the dungeon and you had what? to go around answering questions no. to get out. <laughs> that was, sounds I played horrible. it a lot. It was really fun. <laughs> I played it. was basically I, just I trivia. I had like a um, Magic School Bus game and then I had this like Disney computer game that I loved. And I just remember that it was like a Disney computer game and Mickey Mouse would eat an apple and then there would just be like a round circle in his cheek that would like move <laughs> around. And I always like found it really fascinating that that's how they like dictated that's how they depicted uh someone eating eating just like it was just like circle moving (laughs) and then the apple's gone i don't know it was the graphics were probably horrible and i played oregon trail like in elementary school we didn't have it but a friend of like a family friend had it so whenever we'd go over there we'd play Mm -hmm. actually the girl the girl who somehow the woman who wrote the lyrics for our theme song oh really alexis which i keep meaning to tell you did I tell you that we should tell her this? My mom, when I told her, I was like, yeah, we, it took us a while to like get it out because we were waiting on like trying to make sure we had art and a song and everything. My mom was like, I thought that that was just a song that like existed that you guys no, used. No, they wrote it for I us. I know. It's so good. I just want to say it's thank you to Alexis and... And the other two people who were involved, whose names whose I can't names remember right now, but we'll... The credits of everything. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you... but it's so good. It sounds like a real song. And it is a real song. It is a real song. She was like, she's like, what kind of vibe are you going for? And I was like, I don't really know. Kathy. Like maybe like, yeah. And she was like, Katy Perry. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's do Katy Perry. Um, I love it so much. So thank you to them. And, yeah. and thank you to you. Thank you, you, to you, listener. You, we you. We're about to record another one. You're the best back you. Back, baby. You'll hear it next week. Yeah, you'll hear it now. <laughs> Because I'm going away. Oh, I'm going to San Francisco. Actually, do we want to plug some stuff? I'm going to be in San Francisco uh, on the 4th at 222 Hyde Street at 8 p.m. Then I'm going to be at uh, It's Your Move Games, the game store in Oakland on the 5th of August. Uh, I'm going to be at the Punchline on the 6th, 8th, and 9th. All the shows at 8 o'clock. Um, Neck of the Woods in San Francisco on the 6th and Right Spot in San Francisco on the 8th. Come out to all those shows in San Francisco. They're all on my website, um, mollyrubinlong.com. And yeah, I'm so excited to be in San Francisco. I will be August 1st on Tuesday. So tomorrow I'll be at No Exit in Brooklyn. Nice. Uh, On the 3rd, I will be at Divine Bar also in Brooklyn. That's at 8 o'clock. Both of those are at 8 o'clock. Okay, I'm going to maybe come watch that. And then uh, August 12th, I will be at BDA Studios uh, at 8 o'clock also. I don't know exactly where that is, but it should be a fun show. Um, Oh, this I'm excited about. On the 15th, I'm going to be doing a thing for Pace Magazine. I think it's Planned Parenthood. uh, benefit show Ooh. at eight o'clock so that's at the pace mag at, at, at a 357th avenue in in manhattan and oh and one more time like let's just plug uh august 20th yes all female reboot at the tank theater in hell's kitchen yes at seven o'clock so you can get tickets on their website i assume yeah maybe probably <laughs> right just google it just come to it yeah, it'll be fun it'll um be great 
And yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you guys so much. Keep Keep making making history. history. Bye. (laughs)